Good morning, Bronco. Good morning, Jerry. Well, this is pretty exciting. Our first video session, and I understand you're going to to uh, give us just a beginning tour of uh, what's inside the Liberty Saloon. Yeah. Anyway, let me tell you a couple of things from for outside here. Anyway, if they look way up on top, you'll find the original phone number that we've had a uh, long time ago, Aberdeen 384. That's the numbers that they used to have it when they started getting phones around here. This is a 384th telephone in Aberdeen. And like the city of Aberdeen was Aberdeen 1. And uh, the different numbers that were right there close to each other, they got a little bit further away as they went uh, along. But anyway, it used to say Liberty Pool Hall and Meat Market. That's what it said a long time ago when I was a kid. And we changed it and put the saloon on there. Anyway, and the Velda sign said Liberty Tavern on it. And Velda is the lady that's that leased it out for me now. And, uh, and the other signs bit the dust there. So, moving right along. Were well, you ready to I head in? I think we'll go inside and take a look around. Okay, we'll follow you. By the way, also present today is Wayne Lawson, and Wayne is right here, and he'll be in the uh, video from time to time. Good morning, Wayne. Okay. So here we go. Yeah, have to go inside. I got my dad's old swinging doors that used to be in the back part of the in the billiard room. Still said billiards on it. And uh, so I put it up here in front. Here's some of the, the few deals that I picked up as the years went by. And this 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 board here, this is a menu board that came, it was used to be right next to the, where Billy Gould, uh, the notorious man of Aberdeen that killed so many people. And it was right next door to his Sailors Union office. And uh, the, one of the guys that I knew a long time ago, he told me that he used to go there and eat dinner a lot. And it was, they called it Brooks Dinner. I used to think it was Diner, but the, Diner, D-I-N-E-R. Anyway, I got it all written there, next to Billy Gould's office. But then somebody found this in their basement and brought it in and gave it to me. Uh, they, they had it there for many years. Here's a shipwreck, uh, shipwrecks of Grays Harbor that uh, were on the outside of Grays Harbor and inside some of the deals. In fact, one of the ships is here right now, and it's a, the Sierra, and it's right on this side of the river where, uh, next to where the old uh, Michigan Mill or the Saginaw Mill used to be, which is no more. So here we go inside. First thing that catches our eyes is a pool table. This is still kind of a pool hall, but it's a restaurant also. And uh, and uh, Danny and Velda, they take good care of the restaurant and everything else that's in here. So uh, we'll catch this part of the building later on. Okay. Uh, so let's go over to the other side. Okay, Bronco, I'm just doing kind of a quick, quick pan of of the entire area and I'm going to follow you right now. Yeah. Now you had some stuff that you wanted to show me that you set out over on the pool table? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go take a look. Uh, me and Terry were doing a lot of interviewing and, uh, and I told her about all, uh, most of the cat houses here in Aberdeen, the houses of ill repute. And here's one of the picture of one of the madams that used to be here on the harbor. And she is, this, she just passed away about a year ago. And uh, she uh, used to go over to Max Cigar Store in Aberdeen and play cards with all the people in there. Uh, but this is, 
This is her there, and this is a couple of old cronies. He comes in here a lot now. But uh, let's take a look at. She used to have the Atlas, the Atlas rooms, or the C safe building Cecil Hotel, and uh, it was also called something else too, and I can't remember. So here we go. Here's some of the pictures. Here she is again inside the kitchen of that house, the same house of ill repute that she was running. And this is it right here. This is a picture of the building. And she, this whole upper floor was the house of ill repute. And this right here is the old Finch building, which they, they just tore down. The old Humboldt Saloon that was down on F Street. This is the old VFW Hall that burnt down uh, uh, last year, and it's no more. They just dismantled it. But it used to be the Harbor Rooms, and then uh, uh, Lois Nettleton, I mean, uh, I forgot her name already. Nellie Curtis? No, no, Lois, uh, I mean. Uh, Florence Nettleton? Florence Nettleton. Florence Nettleton and her sister Gladys had, had the other one. But Florence had the harbor, and she moved it over to the Hayes and Hayes Bank building on G Street, uh, a block from F Street, uh, and ran that for many years. And uh, she was, in fact, she was one of the latest ones. And then the one after her that was left with was uh, Nellie Curtis, who met her demise about 1968. Who's this? This is Bronco, me, holding the keys to one of the houses of uh, the two keys uh, of the house of ill repute uh, on, on that was on Wishkaw Street. In fact, that uh, well, they there was a couple more too, but that's the one. That, it was the northern rooms and uh, and the model rooms. And them were the keys to them. I also got the fire bell that was there. The people that owned the drugstore below the building gave me all the keys and the fire bell after they were getting ready to tear down the building and build a new drugstore. So, and that, the end of that story. End of story. Okay, here's a quite interesting thing. These two guys right here at the turn of the century, they were, they were, they were Polish, uh, real smart guys. They were real estate guys. And they were, uh, selling all the property and bringing Polish immigrants here and then selling this property. So they, they like a promised land, they sold that to a lot of Polacks, went out there and lived, and a lot of Croatian people. And uh, in a way, uh, they, they kind of lied to them, you know, and they, they, they called it the promised land. It was nothing but swamp and brush. And then poor guys, they bought this property, went out there, and uh, they did what they could with it, and most of them made good property out of them, you know, but they had to work their uh, butts off to do that. Uh, there's so many places like that. And they sold a lot of property out in the Wishka area where my dad bought this property. He didn't buy it from them, he bought it from one of the guys that was ex-county commissioner, Sam Bowes. And, uh, in a way, uh, but he bought it for different purposes. Him and his partners, I think they did a little bit of bootlegging out there. And uh, in fact, that's what happened. And just just so happened, I just sold the, uh, the property yesterday. I found out about it, it sold. But I haven't seen no money yet, so that that's another story. How do you feel about selling that property? Are you, are you okay? But I'll be able to, I'll be able to go out there anytime I want because they live right down the street, the people that, that I sold it to. So that's good. And they always, I let them always use it when I owned it, and so now they can. Okay, here, by the way, I think I might have uh, talked to you about this before. And this is a picture of, of the people that were working at, at the Bay City Mill, which was called the Union Mill. And it was right behind this tavern. In fact, there's, well, you can't see it now. That's where it used to be, where those pictures on that wall is. But this was, 
of one of the big, biggest lumber mills on the area. And here's my father right here, Tony Tesha. And he, if he was alive now, he'd be 115 years old. Bravo, can you point to him one more time? Oh. I kind of zoomed in a little closer. Okay, right here, my father. Okay. Tony G. Tesha. And this guy right here, he ended up being my dad's competitor. He had a grocery store down the street. And this is my uncle here. And this guy lived in the house that I'm living in now. His name is Jack Ninchevich. This guy, by the, day, by the way, his name is Tony Tesha, just like my dad. They were distant cousins. And uh, this is my other distant uh, uncle. And, uh, Matt, that's, this is his brother. And, but I, I knew about maybe 75 or 80 percent of these guys are all gone now. There isn't one of them living. But I can sure remember a lot of them. Anyway, my dad worked there, and I think it was probably the last part of the, well, he, that's, this was 1913, so he worked there until 1915 when he started to build this building with 21, other, 21 or 22 other guys that worked in the mill with him. But anyway, about a few months ago, or about a year ago, a guy brought me in this booklet here. And it was put out by the San Francisco Insurance Company. And it had all of, it was a fire insurance company, see? And uh, they had, it, it lists all the fire hydrants and, and different places and different mills. And it shows all the mills and everything in this, in this book. See, it printed in uh, August 196. And then it was corrected in 1909. Is this and a Sanborn map? Is it called a Sanborn map, Bronco? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, it is Sanborn. Yeah, copyright by Sanborn. Sanborn map. I never even realized that. Yeah, it's Sanborn, yeah. Sanborn map company. Okay, you must have heard of that before then, huh? See, I wish I would have knew what this said right here. And it says property of. And somebody erased it a long time ago. And the, the, the people that I got it from let me copy it. So I took it to my uh, real estate man, who happened to be a teacher at Grays Arbor College. And he had the college do this for me. So that was really something else. And it shows, shows uh, everything. Every building in the city of Aberdeen at that time. And, uh, and it keeps on going. It shows all the lumber mills and all that stuff. So, we will get back to this later on when I got, when I finished, when I get, uh, I got four sheets of this that I lent out to John Hughes, Aberdeen World, and I, went over there yesterday, tried to get a hold of him to come here and be here today, because he wants to be here real bad when you guys are here. And uh, I went there and he's on, on about a four day weekend or something like that. Uh, so he won't be here probably until next week, which I'm hoping he will be. Because he wanted me to promise that I got a hold of him to bring him over for them. So, and we will get on with something else, okay? Okay. Okay, Bronco, where are we at now? Well, we just moved to the back of the tavern now. This used to be the billiard room. And the partition was right behind where the camera is. Uh, in fact, as you can see the partition up above, but if you could look, uh, it went all the way across. And this, the swinging doors were right here, going into, no, right here. They're right in, right in the middle, going back to the back. And then there was all kinds of pool tables and a, and a card room back there. And then the big, big old belly stove was right here. That was a smoke catcher that used to be. That's still there. And uh, in a way, so now, like, when they have a big crowd or something like that, 
they bring them back here to feed. Uh, as we go around here, I'm going to show you some of the pictures. By the way, the pictures that you see on the wall right there, right there, the pictures are of the Wishka Valley, which is approximately uh, 15 miles from here. And there were some of the splash dams that were built on the rivers, like the Wishkar River had 12 splash dams. And they would catch the water and hold it, and then the, the loggers would log the logs into the river.